Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another one of our free Friday community classes. They happen every single Friday right here on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Let me know you're out there and interested in this content. This week's class is an example of a class being done because a bunch of people asked me to do it. So if there's a class that you'd like to see, a topic you'd like covered, send me a message. I'll get you on the queue and eventually the class will happen. Today we are talking about tattoos. Uh, are we going to spend most of our time today talking about herbal tattoo care, the way that I take care of my tattoos. Everybody's different. Uh, please make sure that what you're doing to heal your tattoos and nourish them is right for your body, but I think I will be able to give you some herbal suggestions today that will really help make your whole tattoo process from start to finish so much easier. I am also, of course, going to talk about some of the arcane aspects of tattoos, how we can work with our inking process as a format of magic, as a way to connect more deeply to green sorcery, to our plant spirit allies. So with that, let us get started. So let's start from the beginning, the day of your tattoo. Most people think of tattoo care as starting after the work has already been done, but I start taking herbs an hour to two hours before my session actually begins. Why? Because I want to maximize how much work I can get done in a session. A lot of the artists that I work with charge per diem. So if I can sit for five or six hours, I'm getting a little more bang for my buck than if I tap out after three hours, right? So there are herbs that we can work with to help facilitate a better tattoo session. These are herbs that calm the nerves, they soothe the nervous system and turn down the pain reflex. They also bring coolness to the surface of the body. A lot of the tension, the discomfort of being tattooed is actually the generation of heat in the skin. So after years of experimenting, I have found that when we can bring these cool, slightly demulcent mucilaginous herbs into our tattoo session, it actually helps the body more efficiently release or resolve heat from uh, just the drill of the needle, the intensity, the inflammatory response, and it makes the sit so much easier. Now, I throw a couple of herbs in my session formula as well uh, that just help me relax, that have some muscle relaxing qualities, some anodyne, some pain relieving qualities, uh, but you certainly don't have to do that. I have put the work in for my tattoos, so I don't feel uh, any kind of way about uh, kind of going into that nice trance state during my tattoo. I feel like I've earned it. Um, and I think, you know, whatever you can do to make the process more comfortable is good. So for folks who are supporting my work over on the Patreon, uh, first of all, thank you so much. Second of all, under this video, I've created a PDF for you with recipes. So folks who are on Patreon at any level, you're going to get recipes for my tattoo care. Most importantly, my easy needles formula, which is the formula that I take so that my tattoo sessions hurt less. They're more relaxing. Uh, my tattoos go well. My skin receives the ink more easily. I can sit still for my artist better, which makes them happy, right? So you will get my exact formula for the tincture that I build. Uh, but I do want to talk about a couple of herbs generally here that you could be working with for your tattoo sessions. The first, please do not sleep on this herb, people do it far too much, is chamomile. German chamomile specifically, uh, in a tincture, as a tea, you can fill a water bottle with an iced chamomile tea and sip on it throughout your session. Chamomile is fantastic at relaxing the smooth muscle tissue that butts up against the fascia underneath the skin and that can make the entire tattoo session dramatically more enjoyable. So please don't sleep on chamomile. I work with chamomile both in my easy needles formula and just in general during sessions to help them go more easily. So however you want to bring chamomile in, please do that. Uh, I also think about 
one of my favorite Nervine herbs, skullcap. This is American skullcap or European skullcap. Why? Because not only does uh, skullcap unwind the tension out of the nervous system, so when you're on uh, the table or the chair, you're underneath the needle and you start kind of getting bound up, right? Your muscles become tense and you're kind of holding on as they go over those rough spots. Skullcap actually helps unwind that building tension out of the peripheral nervous system while simultaneously being a cooling nervine. So scam, uh, skullcap will also take some of the heat out of the tattoo work. And this is an herb that um, no matter what my formulation is, internal, topical, day of, day after, month after, you will see skullcap showing up in my formulas in very specific amounts paired with very specific herbs because it transforms how well I can sit for my artists, and it's done the same for lots of other people too. Uh, third one that I wanna talk about, this gets a little more into folks that struggle with just the pain. Uh, maybe you have a little bit more sensitive skinscape, um, it's hard for you to sit for long amounts of time, the pain compounds for you, and instead of your, uh, you know, your chemicals kicking in and kind of getting you into that squishy trance that we love uh, on the tattoo chair, maybe that doesn't happen as much for you. California poppy in small frequent doses during a session can be incredibly helpful at taking the edge off. This is a true pain reliever herb, muscle relaxer herb, anodyne, uh, kind of quiets and dampens the nervous system, gets us into just a little bit of a sedate space. And the reason I like California poppy in small doses throughout a session rather than big heroic doses to begin or end a session is that it kind of keeps you in that low grade relaxation throughout the entire time. You never get super sleepy, you never move into states of getting a little bit giddy uh, from how dopey the herbs can be. It's just a nice smooth sailing ride. So you can experiment with California poppy. Last but not least, I always build up a reserve of ashwagandha in my body at least five to seven days before a tattoo session. I like to have that adaptogenic reserve in my system. I like to have that muscle relaxing, calm, centering power of ashwagandha. And I will often pair ashwagandha with astragalus for very much the same reasons, to nourish the skin, the light of protection that surrounds my body, which only helps my skin to heal more efficiently. I will take the ashwagandha uh, all the time. It's an herb I always work with. Astragalus I take for about a week before my session and then I stop. Uh, I do not like taking astragalus the day of my tattoo. It's a little too stimulating and I don't like taking astragalus during that first five to seven days of healing. Uh, the energetics are just a little off for that process for me. So there's a few herbs that you could work with day of tattoo to sit still, relax, enjoy the process a little bit more, make your artist happy, right? You know that when you are a good uh, recipient of tattoos, that when you can sit still and when your artist gets into the zone, when they're in their creative flow state and you don't ask for a break or fidget, uh, they are more inclined to do better work, to get the ink in their right, to be a little more light-handed. So the more we can uh, be supportive of what they're doing for us, the better the tattoo session goes, right? I think about uh, being a good recipient of a haircut, that if you are moving around and fidgeting and talking and getting up and down while somebody's trying to cut your hair, you're gonna end up with a funky haircut, right? So we're gonna try to sit still, be calm. Uh, these are herbs you could also take before a haircut. You just get in the chair and relax. So now we have our tattoo. Now what? There are some herbs that I like to work with to heal up a tattoo. Now, uh, again, follow your body, follow what herbs work with you. If you're not sure, work with a qualified and experienced herbalist, especially one that's got some tattoos, uh, that's worked uh, on healing their own tattoos herbally to figure out what is effective and what is not effective. First, I love a cool herbal compress for my tattoos. Again, tattoos will cause an instantaneous inflammatory response, which means heat during the session. There's a buildup of heat and that heat often lasts several days, sometimes weeks after a session. This is where the resultant itch 
comes from from a tattoo in my perspective from an energetic herbal perspective the itch is the body trying to resolve a buildup of heat energetic heat not necessarily literal heat and then of course the inflammatory response uh, will also cause some itching so a nice cool compress over the tattoo a couple times a day is so nice so what you're doing for this compress is you're essentially making a relatively strong herbal tea it's nice and strained nice and filters there's no uh, herb particles in there that could get pushed into your open wounds right so you're making this nice clean tea putting it in the fridge for a few hours getting it cool pouring that onto a clean cloth or a paper towel and gently putting that right on your fresh tattoo just lay it on there you will love how it feels the coolness is so comforting and the herbs get in there and do their work do that for about 10 minutes peel it off let it air dry or pat it dry completely uh, before moving on with your day you don't want to walk around with wet seepy skin when you're healing a tattoo uh, the skin is compromised when it's wet so uh, we want to make sure that that dries up so compresses also salves again folks who are on my patreon at any level i'm sharing my uh, tattoo healing salve recipe with you telling you how to make it uh, so that's down in the downloads if you're watching this there for everyone else let's talk about a few herbs that you could consider for a compress for a hydrosol to spritz your tattoos for a salve uh, i like a salve not a balm we don't want any beeswax balms on our tattoos they're too commodogenic. They seal the tattoo in. They don't let the body breathe. They don't let the body uh, exude sebum uh, or, or any kind of materials, the excess ink that needs to come out of the tattoo. It needs to be able to breathe. If it can't breathe, you're going to have problems, possibly blow your lines. So please don't do that. Rather, we want a salve that's a creamy, buttery, lotion-like texture. And in fact, the way that I make my tattoo healing salve, uh, it is almost even a little bit liquidy. Uh, so I keep it in the refrigerator. But when I put it on, my tattoos can breathe. They feel good and they always heal up perfectly. My artists are always very happy with my healing work. So first and foremost, calendula is going to give you not only a resolution of inflammation, but also some coolness and some antiseptic properties that will go through the skin and just keep it nice and clean. Again, calendula in a compress or in a salve. I think about comfrey leaf used externally to help knit the skin. Now, first couple of years that I was experimenting this, I was concerned about using comfrey leaf because I didn't want to knit the skin so fast that the excess ink that needed to move out of my tattoo could move out. I didn't want the tattoo to heal too quickly. I've never had an issue with this. Uh, you're not using comfrey leaf in such large amounts in a salve or a compress that the knitting is going to happen so quickly. So a little comfrey leaf in a compress in a salve with other herbs. I probably wouldn't do comfrey leaf alone unless uh, I was treating, you know, maybe somebody that had something going on, um, in which case I would still have other herbs in there. Uh, but a really lovely herb just to help the skin start to knit and lock in all that beautiful new ink that you sat for, that you paid for, right? Uh, again, skullcap, as effective externally as they are internally to cool the skin, to draw heat out of the tattoo, and to settle the nervous system, right? Very, very important. Sometimes folks get a little bit of a nervous system buzz, after a tattoo session. This can last for hours, days, and sometimes weeks. Uh, as we have come out of that endorphin rush, we crash a little bit and the body can be left kind of with a hum in it. And Skullcap is such a beautiful, beautiful friend for those moments. Lavender, I love a little lavender in my compresses and salves to antiseptic properties antibacterial, antifungal, soothing, and also I have found helps settle the ink into the body very, very beautifully, helps protect those lines, right, which is what we want. Uh, California poppy, anodyne effect is just as potent externally as internally, in my opinion, so when there's pain, if you're finding that your tattoo is a little achy, uh, you know, it's just not feeling very comfortable, do that cold compress, have some of that in your salve uh, recipe and you will get some nice topical pain relief without having to turn to 
chemical-based pharmaceutical pain relief uh, options. Shave grass, also known as horsetail, shave grass is an essential for a topical healing of tattoo. This is one herb that I will not be without when I get worked on. Shave grass cools the skin, replenishes essential minerals and nutrients to the skin, uh, and really, really helps the skin start to repair and rebuild itself after the damage of a tattoo. Tattoos are pretty brutal. Uh, if you really think about what's happening when you get worked on, uh, it's quite a lot for the body to deal with. So shave grass helps put uh, skin building nourishment back into the skin while cooling heat and also settling the nerve bed, which I really like. I also think about rose. This is especially important for people who build up a lot of heat and dryness in their tattoos. The tattoo looks dry, it's flaky, it's hot to the touch. Uh, there's a desire to put tons and tons and tons of lotion or A&D or Aquaphor on. Uh, the only time the tattoo feels good when it's healing is when it's wet or really lubricated. Uh, when it dries out, it feels tight or stiff or uh, that if you move too much, it feels like the skin is about to rip. This is when you want the cool, calm, demulcent energy of rose petals in your compresses and in your salves. Chamomile. Talked about chamomile during the session. Chamomile is a topical in a compressor salve. Also really beautiful for all the same reasons. Settles the nerve, calms the skin, brings essential minerals into the skin. Uh, really, really lovely ally that is in all of my recipes. And last but not least, I think about chickweed for both compress and salve. Chickweed is going to help make sure that the lymphatic system continues to move to pick up and deal with any excess ink that may have been pushed a little too far into the skin bed to ensure that the skin is getting movement, that fluids are moving around, and to help detoxify the body after a tattoo session, both from the tattoo materials themselves and also from that excess rush of stress response and pain response hormones that we have during our session. So there's a handful of herbs for you. How they're blended uh, really is up to the individual. Again, I'm sharing my personal tattoo protocols and recipes over on Patreon. So if you're interested, come over and I'll give those to you um, and all the instructions and all of that are there. So now that we've talked about care, proper care, uh, during and after your tattoo, let's talk a little bit about tattoo magic. I want to think about ways that tattoos can inform and inspire and empower our plant spirit work. Um, you may have gotten glimpses of my own tattoos over various videos. They are all botanically themed. They all involve plants that I have a deep relationship with or a healthy fear of. Uh, different images of the tools that I work with and places that I find sacred uh, where I live. And so my tattoos are very meaningful to me and I'm very happy to have them um, helping me create body autonomy and take ownership of uh, the body that I'm in. So first and foremost, we can work with tattoos as a way to show devotional homage to our plant spirit allies. So if you're very close with a particular plant, if a plant has shown up for you, has become an ally or familiar spirit to you, has helped you heal, uh, from something very big in your life that's gotten you through something, uh, adding that plant into a tattoo, whether it's a big piece, a small piece, is a really beautiful way to show devotion, to show love, to say, you know, you mean so much to me and I'm so grateful that I'm going to carry an image of you with me wherever I may wander. So that aspect is definitely the way that I work most uh, with my own tattoos. I also think of uh, having botanical tattoos is reminding me of part of this, right? That uh, I am just as enshrouded in nature as everyone and everything else. That sometimes when I forget that, uh, I look at my skin and I see myself wrapped up in the colors of nature, in the patterns and textures of nature, and it reminds me that I'm part of it too, which is very important. Um, one cool thing that's happened for me with the particular kinds of tattoos that I have is I've met other plant nerds. Uh, people have stopped me and commented on my tattoos and showed me their tattoos and we all have tattoos of flowers and plants and you make connections, right? You find people 
that are like-minded um, because you're wearing your passions on your sleeve, quite literally. Um, I also think about the deeper sorcery of tattoos and how they can act to help us facilitate headspaces that create magic. So an example is we could tattoo apotropaic plants on our body. I have a few myself. These are the plants that help us feel protected, feel safe, avert danger. While the plant material itself is not on our person, the fact that an image of the plant is carried with us does help to nourish and strengthen the connection between us and the plant, between us and the green realm. So this is very good. Um, you can think about herbs that offer protection or shielding or boundary and bring those plants into your life through ritual and then honor that connection through tattooing, placing them somewhere that's meaningful to you in the same way that we might wear uh, a, a shirt with that or you know carry a sachet of that plant material. It's just another way to stay connected. Similarly, we could think about herbs that call something in, that attract something like peace or health or abundance or love. Um, bringing those herbs into our life first through ritual to make the connection and then honoring that connection through having them tattooed on our body. So uh, there is definitely a magical aspect to this work. It goes much, much deeper, but I think that folks who do this process will kind of be initiated into the deeper mysteries of tattoos on their own. Um, I do want to talk about one aspect of a more advanced herbal tattoo practice. I have personally done this uh, for your safety. It's not something that I necessarily recommend unless you are very well versed in both making herbal medicine properly and working with herbs uh, that you know will be a good fit for your body. And that is sometimes uh, when I am having a particular plant tattooed on my body, I will uh, compress that tattoo while it is healing with a tea or a compress made from that herb so that some of the herb itself ends up infused into the tattoo. Now, I have talked to two of my artists before about using herbal tea made from individual plant spirits in the actual tattoo session, having that mixed into the ink and put into my body. Uh, so far, both of them have denied the request only because it would be so hard to ensure sterility and to make sure that it's sanitary. So uh, folks who are tattoo artists could maybe think about a way to make that work, whether it's, you know, um, heating the water up to an appropriate temperature or, you know, doing an extract into a, a salinated water or however it works out. But for me, the workaround has been those first two or three days while the tattoo is open and healing, I'm doing compresses not only with the herbs we talked about earlier to heal, but also with that individual herb to help make the physical connection between my tattoo and the plant spirit. So um, when I do that, I'm also, of course, oftentimes doing journey work. I'm sitting with that plant spirit while the tattoo heals for that week, two weeks, whatever, I'm allowing the ritual of the tattoo and the healing of the tattoo to be ceremony, right? To be part of a initiation, a connection to that plant. And so there are deeper, more advanced ways that you can bring this into your work. Again, being always mindful of safety, always being honoring how your body is and what works for your body, your temperament, your constitution, and of course, which plants are suitable and safe to use in this way. Uh, lots of folks right now are getting uh, poison plant allies tattooed on their body. I'm all for it. Uh, that would be an example of a time when you probably would not be using that herb in a compress, uh, but would be journeying with them in a different way while the tattoo heals, obviously. So hopefully some inspiration, some ideas, recipes, herbs to think about, magical connections. Again, lots of advanced content and more over on the Patreon. Uh, and you can also get your recipes over there. And with that, I will send you out into the world to think about what your next tattoo is going to be. If you have some cool ones, I'd love to hear about it. I love to talk tattoos. See you next time.